um, kind of the, the worst kept secret in Jets land that they are changing their uniforms again next year. Um, the video was very Woody centric. It was, I'm sure you've all seen it by now. It was a screenshot of Woody's phone blowing up with text messages from a bunch of different players. And then he's opening the text messages and it's all videos from them saying they want to keep those legacy uniforms that they wore last year. And it just like, it just struck me as like, man, like I, I get, I get that you want to be out in front with the fans and everything, but when we're not winning, this stuff comes off the wrong way. Um, I know what he wants to win. And I think very much that he wants to be loved by Jets fans. And he kind of wants to be at the center of it when it does happen. But the only thing that's going to help that reputation is winning the Super Bowl. And without that success or even a modicum of that success, like getting into the playoffs, everything else that he does, whether it's a chain or this, this uniform unveiling or just being visible and being around like all those things come off as very tone deaf when he doesn't have the success happening at the same time. It, it almost seems like he'd be better served to kind of be more in the background while this losing is still happening because there's almost nothing you can say or do that's going to make us as Jets fans feel better about where we're at without the winning, right? Like that needs to happen first. And, and I almost just want to like, be like, dude, read the room. Right. Cause it doesn't, it doesn't land well. Um, however, I do want to shout out the Jets social team who always do a really, really tremendous job. But the last few days they had a couple real heaters out on Twitter. Um, the first one was there was a, a video from, I guess the pro bowl, festivities of sauce um somebody running around on sauce it was somebody famous that i don't know um but you know probably because i'm too old and i'm not in touch with pop culture but somebody was running around on sauce and they kind of put a double move on him and they got away from him and sauce pulled up and kind of just let the guy run and he caught a deep pass and you know obviously twitter's going nuts sauce got cooked blah 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 and then um you know, the Jets social team just kind of quote tweets it and it's just said, meanwhile, in the backfield, and it was just Quinn and doing his sack dance, which I thought was just a tremendous response to that. And then after the uniform tease last night where they kind of were vague about what the other variations of the uniform are going to be, they were clear that the legacy white that they wore last year will be back, but we don't know what the green and the black potentially look like. So it was a little bit of an incomplete tease with the final you know, unveiling coming in April. Um, and the Jets just put out a video replying to it. And it was an old video of Quinnen that I'm sure we've all seen where he's being <laughs> asked a question about Kyler Murray. And he pretty much just stops in the middle of the question and stops answering it. And they're like, is that it? And he's like, yeah, I'm good. That's it. Um, and so two, two real heaters from, uh, from the Jets social team the last few days. As for the, the uniforms that are now being put to rest, I mean, Good God, like rest in peace to a, a truly, truly terrible era of Jets football. Honestly, nothing good happened um, in the five years that we've had these uniforms. I never really loved them. I remember when they were first unveiled, I was like kind of on the move for work that day. And I literally like I stopped. I got out of the car. I went into a Starbucks and I set up my laptop so I could watch it live because I was excited. I thought we were po possibly going back to the eighties and nineties uniforms at that time. Um, and I remember when they were unveiled, like the whole thing was just like a little bit cringeworthy and the uniforms were just weird. And I was like, eh, like, okay, I guess I can try to grow to like these. Um, but it never really happened. I never really loved the uniforms. I also didn't hate them as much as other people did. There were people that like really thought they were garbage there were some people out there that liked them, but I think by and large, more than anything, these uniforms are just going to be remembered for how bad the football was during this time. Um, and it's going to be funny to look back on them in a, few, in a few years as just being solely associated with the garbage product that has been on the field for the last five years and the two quarterbacks that we drafted in that time period who amounted to basically nothing. Um, and when I was preparing for this, I was trying to think of another team 
uniform era that we just remember for being bad, right? Not necessarily that the uniforms were bad or anything like that, just that the product on the field for that team during the uniform era was horrible. And the only two I could really come up with, and I stuck to football. Um, I could probably, you know, let me know in the comments if you can think of some others in, in some of the other major sports. But the two in football that I could come up with were the cream school uniforms for the Buc Buccaneers and the Patriots kind of old school three point stance uniforms, which historically like the Patriots never really did much. I think, you know, Brady wearing them a few times during his run probably changes that perception a little bit. But the Bucks cream school uniforms are are pretty much universally regarded as just a terrible era for the Buccaneers. So let me know if you can think of any others there. As far as the announcement in April, um, it'll be interesting to see if they screw it up or if they stick to kind of the simplicity of what that legacy uniform looked like last year. Um, and we'll see how they do the green and black alternates. Is it going to be good? What color are the face masks? Like there's still kind of a few variables that I think will will tip it in one direction or the other as to whether or not this will be, you know, widely loved. Um, I think it's a good change no matter what, but we'll see what the details are. And hopefully the announcement in April is not as cringeworthy and uh, and meme worthy as the last one was because, um, you know, still the pictures of that float around Twitter sometimes and, and they're terrible. So. You know, finally, I would say on the uniforms, last point here, theoretically, uh, if there were to be a throwback uniform game now moving forward, you know, for the last 25 years, we've all wanted those 80s, 90s uniforms in a potential throwback game, and we didn't get them until last year, right? So now moving forward with those uniforms as the primary, what do we want to see in a throwback uniform game? And I think the answer for me is clearly the the 97 to you know mid 20 teens um uniforms specifically kind of moving it back towards uh the the late 90s early 2000s when they were wearing reebok they had it right it was an updated look on kind of the original jets uniforms from the 60s and it was by and large, we've talked about this a bunch of times, a mostly good era of football. 97 to 2010, we were making the playoffs at like a 50% clip. There are good um, feelings associated with those uniforms. Specifically, again, the Reebok, the Reebok ones, not the Nike ones. Um, I think at this point, like, who cares about the Titans uniforms? Um, you know, most of this team's fan base is going to have – you know, memories of those late 90s, early 2000s teams all the way through 2010. And, and I think that's probably what they should go back to uh, in the case of a throwback game.